In 2014, the buzz at Cisco Live in the USA was clearly the Internet of Things, or IoT. In 2015, in beautiful San Francisco, the buzz was clear. It was the ACI, the Application-Centric Infrastructure. That's all I saw, all I heard about. I even bought a book on it while there at the Cisco Press Store. I'm sure you have heard about ACI, and you've been really, really interested in learning about it. But maybe you read some stuff that didn't make any sense whatsoever. Well, you've come to the right place. In this nugget, I'm going to peel back the curtain on ACI and make sure you understand it thoroughly. Now, let's begin by analyzing what was on the forefront of the Cisco engineers' mind as they were designing ACI. Well, first of all, they realized that everybody's raving about the capabilities and the future of software-defined networking. But they said, my goodness, what do we have today? I mean, what really is there today that we can implement to get this going? Also, they looked and they said, you know, when it comes to software-defined networking, we really need to go beyond what is available right now in basic graphical user interface management tools. If you look on the security side of the house, for instance, Cisco does a great job with Cisco Security Manager as an example, and that pushes policies down to all your security devices, and that sure does look a lot like software-defined networking. So they said we really need to go beyond tools like the data center manager tool and various GUIs that they already have for managing the infrastructures. They also really wanted to make sure that they could implement a solution in a current data center that's utilizing Cisco gear with being as non-disruptive as possible. Also a big deal, of course, is for organizations that want to develop and, and deploy software-defined networking right now, they might be a little hesitant because of the open standard community forums that would be their support basis. That's one of the things you need to think about, right? When you go with open standard technologies, a lot of the times your support is just going to be the good folks of the community. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, and I've had some great experiences with that. It's just that for a lot of enterprises, that makes them a little bit skeptical. Also, Cisco really wanted to focus on the app. You see, there's so much focus on the network when we talk SDN, but Cisco said, wait a minute, wait a minute, this is really all about the app. Let's do it from an app-centric, thus the name, application-centric infrastructure, Let's really make sure that when a company is about to roll out some really new cool software as a service based application, for example, that the ACI makes this very, very simple and addresses the needs of the app as opposed to any other needs. And then, of course, we need a solution that is multi-hypervisor. You have organizations today, if you look in their data centers, you're going to see Hyper-V being utilized where it makes sense. You're going to be seeing Zen, Citrix's Zen product, utilized where it makes sense. You're going to see KVM. You're going to see, of course, VMware. So you're going to see lots of different hypervisor solutions that a robust software-defined networking initiative should really seamlessly integrate. So the engineers up at Cisco got hard at work and they came up with the application-centric infrastructure and they said, look, this will allow us to very quickly provision the network for applications and also to beautifully decommission the changes that we've made for particular applications. This is so important, right? How many times does it happen that you roll out some technology, then you realize, okay, we no longer need it, but you've got these configuration droppings all over the place. Ew, that sounded gross. They also wanted to make sure that it could apply itself to both physical and virtualized environments, that it would snap into cloud-based infrastructures, that it would be very policy and system approached, that it would utilize open standards, and that it could be implemented with the least total cost of ownership as possible. Now, that would certainly be argued by some implementers out there today, but that was certainly what they were trying for. Now, let me show you the components that make up the ACI system. And I need to put a little caveat in here. I don't often do this, but right now it is very, very necessary. I am presenting this information for technology that exists right now. This is going to dramatically expand according to Cisco. So we're going to see more components that are possible. We'll see ACI intelligence over a much wider range of switches and devices. But for right now, this is how ACI has begun. 
So here's the current cast. The large device you see over on the right is the Nexus 9K. Specifically, we would call this a big spine device. And this is the 9508 that I've depicted for you. Here we would have an ACI leaf device. And this is the 9396. And then we have our Application Policy Infrastructure Controller, or APIC. You would actually have three of these at a minimum for the redundancy that you would want. This stuff, this physical equipment and the software running on it integrates with our ecosystem of stuff in the data center. This would be our Microsoft software. This would be our VMware software. This would be our F5 load balancers. It might be our SAP software. We're going to seek to integrate all of this stuff with the ACI intelligence of these devices. Wait a minute, what is ACI really doing for us? How does it really work? Well, let me share that with you now. So if you look at a lot of applications today, you'll see that there is a web interface component. This is how the users get in and use the application. Woohoo, yeah, we love this app. Oh, this app is great. Thank you so much. You guys are the best. Then there's the intelligence for the application itself and then there's usually the database that this application draws from. For the web interface, let's say this is being presented by a VM. For our application, let's say it's some physical servers that get involved and also some virtual machines that get involved. And then let's say for the database, it is on an old school physical server. So what happens here is we categorize these components that make up the app as EPGs in ACI language. These are endpoint groups. And what we love to do is we love to go in and set up the policies for the interaction of these various devices. So we've got the policy right here, policy right here. Obviously, there's policy for the web users that are going to be accessing this particular application. And to assign this policy of how these components would interact, the quality of service that would be utilized, the filtering that would be utilized, and, and to set up the communications between the app and the database server, we need this policy implemented and we do that in a very efficient way. We use an application network profile. Now, I want you to think of this application network profile as kind of like a service profile that we were utilizing inside the UCS system. Remember what we would do? We would create this service profile that could be applied to any future hardware that we drop in to give that particular hardware its personality, how it's going to boot, how it's going to behave, where it's going to store stuff, all that great information, what virtualized identities it will use. Well, the application network profile is a lot like that. It's putting the policy and the infrastructure in place to support our particular application. And just like service profiles, we could go in and we could clone those things. We could create nice application profile templates so that rolling out further apps that share characteristics with the current app that we've rolled out is very, very simple. So application-centric infrastructure, you gotta love it. We are making the app king and we are deploying it with the policies that it needs across physical and virtual equipment with a few clicks of the mouse. Now, if you delve into the literature in ACI or you attend an ACI lecture by a distinguished Cisco engineer, you will discover that they love to speak in terms of northbound and southbound protocols for ACI's implementation. This just means stuff heading that way, and this would be our applications themselves, and stuff heading this way, this would be the network equipment, right? So northbound, there is REST, protocols utilized, there's XML, there's proprietary APIs that are used, there's OpenStack that could be utilized. So lots of options for our northbound protocols from the APIC or APIC. And then southbound, we could use something like OP 
Flex. Cisco has submitted this for standardization, this way in which to communicate with the network devices in an ACI environment. Now, one of the things we love so much about the fact that these northbound protocols are standards, unless we're talking about the proprietary APIs, but let's just get rid of those for a second. When you use these beautiful open standards, it opens up the world to a lot of third-party management applications for the overall API infrastructure. So this can integrate with all these system managers out there, these cloud orchestration products, these automation products. So we just love this push for open standards whenever Cisco is developing new technologies. And remember, as I promised you a moment ago in this nugget, this technology is going to be more, more pervasive. It's going to be across more devices, this ACI, and there'll be really, really cool ways in which to extend your ACI fabric. Let's say we've got our, I'll draw it in because <laughs> I like to draw. Let's say we've got our leaf device right here. Here's one of our Apex. We, of course, have the spine device, this big Nexus 9K, and we want to extend all of this ACI into intelligence into another part of the infrastructure, well, we can use something called an AVS. This is the Cisco Application Virtual Switch. You're basically emulating this intelligence on this software device as a way in which to extend this out to a different part of your data center, extending the ACI fabric, utilizing software in the form of the application virtual switch. So lots of technologies like this are going to be coming to make it easy for us to extend this intelligence and let's face it, make the intelligence more affordable and more achievable. And it's at this point in the nugget that I pause and I reflect for a moment on just how incredibly lucky I am. I am so lucky to be training for CBT Nuggets full time because of nuggets like this one. I certainly hope that I have shed great light on ACI for you and made something that can be presented in an extremely complex manner very, very simple for you. I hope you're excited by ACI and maybe you'll be joining me for full courses on it here at CBT Nuggets in the future. Well, I sure hope this nugget was informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.